Hello everyone, this is Binsu. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, so today what we are going to do, we are going to understand how to fully define a sketch in SOLIDWORKS with an example. So let us begin it. So what I will do first, I will go to file, go to new, select the part modeling interface, click on OK. Okay, so let us see what is the diagram we have. So this is the diagram that we have. Uh, now the, the, you see, if you look at the diagram, we have a lot of circles, we have an arc. Now the question that should come in your mind is like, from where should I begin? So normally what do I do? I see in the diagram, are there any set of concentric circles? Which if you look at this diagram, we do have, if you look at the center, we are having around four concentric circles. Uh, so what I will do, I'll first begin with this. I will be positioning the center point of the circle at the origin and then create the four concentric circles. Okay, so let us begin. So I'll select the front plane, click on sketch, create the four concentric circles. So first I'm creating them without giving any dimensions. Yes. I'll also explain you briefly the mouse controls in the for zoom in and zoom out as well as pan. If you need to zoom in, you have to eventually, you know, move your scroll button in the upward direction. That's how you zoom in. If you need to zoom out, move your scroll button in the downward direction. That's how you zoom out. If I need to pan the entire sketch to some other location, just press control in your keyboard, then press the scroll button and then drag your mouse. Okay, so that's how you pan the sketch. Okay, so I hope so now you are familiar with the mouse controls. So now, now let us give the dimensions as given to us. So inner circle is having diameter of 22. So I'll go to smart dimensions, give the dimension as 22. Uh, then the other circle is having a radius of 16. So this is 32. And then outer one is 58. And then we have outer circle of 78. Okay, so that's it. We have eventually given all the dimensions. And eventually what we can observe, the sketch is fully defined. Why it has happened? Because directly we located the center point of the circle at the origin. So it has taken care of the geometrical constraints. Now if you look at the diagram, the diameter of 58, it's not a continuous circle, but it's a construction circle. Now how to create a construction circle? It's very simple. Just select the circle and then click on, in options, we'll find an option called as for construction. Just click on the checkbox and then click on the close dialog option. Now you got it, construction. Okay, so we have completed with the four concentric circles. Now, if you see it here, we have a profile like this. Okay, so what I will do, I'll first create a reference vertical axis. How to create it? Just come here under the line, click on the drop down arrow. We have something called a center line. So if you need to create any reference entities, we always use the center line feature. Now create a center line, which is passing through the origin. Okay, now, uh, now, what was the reason I created the center line was to eventually get the center point for the circle. Because if you see here, it's a circle. Okay, now it becomes very easy for us to locate the center point. There you go. If you need to escape from the circle command, you can just right click your mouse button and click on select. Now, I'll give dimension. This is 14. So, I'll go to smart dimensions. Give the dimension as 14. I will just zoom it. Now what do you see here? We eventually have two vertical lines which are at a distance of 6 mm each. I'll create one vertical line. Right click select to come out of the line. Now I'll give the distance. This is what? This is nothing but this is 3. So we need the same line on the other side. So it's quite simple. We can use the mirror feature. Just click on mirror entities. So in entities to mirror, I will select this line. Mirror about, just click on mirror about. I will select this axis and then click on OK. So there you go, we got exact mirror copy of this entity. Now we need to make the profile as this. So we will have to use the trim entities option. So in trim entities, we will use power trim option. 
you have to be very careful when you are using this just trim out those entities which you don't need so i will trim out this 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 and yeah now what do you observe if you observe here this line has turned into blue that eventually means it is now underdefined now how do you understand like what uh, constraint you have to assign to it so it's very simple there is a trick behind it what you have to do just drag your mouse at any of these points i will drag it here select the point and then drag your mouse so eventually what do you get from this we understand that you know the distance of 3 mm from the vertical axis has not been maintained here and eventually both the lines are symmetric with respect to the reference axis so we can assign the symmetrical geometry constraint now how to assign it so first select the line with reference to which you need to make a symmetric then press the control key in your keyboard select the other line then press then select the reference vertical axis and now in add relations you will see the symmetric option just click on it and then click on close dialog box so there you go so finally you have got the profile as needed in the diagram now if you see the same profile we have total six copies so let's see how to create multiple copies in solid works now just been have uh, just beneath mirror entities you have a something called as linear sketch pattern don't click on it just select the drop down arrow assign it i'll click on circular sketch pattern so first you have to define the center point of rotation so i'll click on this box my center point of rotation will be the origin then scroll down select this option entities to pattern so in entities to pattern i will select all the entities which i need to pattern so one is the circle then the two vertical lines and the arc okay and here we have to enter six that is the six number of copies that we need and then just close the dialog box so there you go so we have eventually created the center part okay now what do you observe we have another set of concentric circle exactly at at uh, about the origin so we'll create that so you know you can also extend the reference line that you have done how do you extend the reference line just bring your cursor at the blue dot select it and then drag your mouse i will create the two sets of concentric circles so now here what are the dimensions we have inner one is 12 outer one is 22 so i'll create that inner one is 12 and outer one is 22 okay and we have been also given the distance that is 57 so i will select the center point of this circle and the origin drag by mouse this will be 57 fine so need if you can extend the reference axis again so now it looks perfect okay so now what do you see if you go back to the diagram now we have another two sets of circles at the bottom along with an arc what we are going to do i will just create one set of concentric circle and the other part we are going to mirror it okay so first let us create this set of concentric circle so i will zoom out come at the bottom create the two circles so what is the dimension for that inner radius is 18 and diameter is 18 outer one is 36 so this is 18 and the outer diameter that i have that is 36 and if you look here the distance between center to center of the circle is 90 that means with respect to the origin it is going to be 45 so select this point and the reference axis which is 45 and then select this point and the origin this we we have is 47 okay so now we have done till there now what we have to do if you look here we have been given a reference dimension for the reference line of dimension of 48 and this is eventually going to help us in creating the curve okay so let us create that i will create a center line okay right click select and this dimension with ref 
reference to the origin is given as 48 click on ok and now here what I am going to do if you see I, I am I have an arc of radius 20 so the best thing if you need to create such an arc is you can go to circle create a circle of a diameter that is equivalent to that is given to you so radius is 20 so I will create a circle of diameter 40 and then what I will do I will select this circle press control key in my keyboard select this circle I will apply the tangency constraint similarly select this circle again press control in your keyboard and select the reference axis that you have just made and in add relation select again tangent so eventually you got that curve okay now we will focus at the other arc that we have so that is this so it's a it's basically an arc whose radius is given as 82 so let us see how to create that now just beneath this circle you have lot of arcs option just expand the drop down arrow we are going to use the three point arc option here so just click on three point arc okay so first point i will see look at the position where i am creating the first point i am not making it at the quadrant i am just dragging it away from the quadrant so this is my first point okay and second point is going to be somewhere over here and the third point I will randomly position anywhere. I will just randomly position anywhere my mouse and click it here. There you go. Then click on OK. So now we will give the dimension that is given to us. It's 82. So go to smart dimensions. This is 82. So now eventually we need to make it tangent. So select this arc, press control. just a minute oh. yeah so we have to exit from the smart dimension so you can press escape from your keyboard or just click on smart dimension here yeah now we need to create tangency between this arc and this circle so select both the entities by the control key and select tangent same thing you have to do here select this press control and tangent so there you go we have got a smooth curve as per the diagram now we have to go to the trim options okay so power trim i will trim this that's it we have got the curve now what i'm going to do i need this entire thing to be mirrored on the other side so i'll use the mirror entities option entities to mirror i will select this arc both the curves which we have made then the two concentric circles then in mirror about i will specify this vertical axis click on ok now we are left out with one more thing that is a line connecting the two circles which is at the quadrant so i'll go to line just zoom it snap it to the quadrant so if you see this symbol that is nothing but the quadrant of the circle from this quadrant to this quadrant okay right click select that's it so we have completed with the drawing and if you look at the bottom we have the message as fully defined so that means all the entities in this sketch is fully defined now if you need to show the uh, constraints like what are the different geometric constraints you can show that you see an eye, eye icon here aside the eye icon you have a drop down arrow just click on the drop down arrow and here you have something called as view the sketch relations so if you click on it it will show you all the sketch relations but normally we avoid it so normally I, I keep it off if you if you feel like the dimensions are also making it it's creating a lot of confusion you can also off the sketch dimensions so there you go if you need to bring it back click on the drop down arrow click on the view sketch dimensions okay now you have to just save your drawing so just go to file save as and you can save it to any location say I am just saving it in desktop I will create it as sample sketch okay so now the file is saved the moment you save you can see here in the tree file name will be given as the name that you have given for saving it okay so thanks for watching i hope so this video has made clear
to you like how to fully define a sketch in SOLIDWORKS. So we will be taking one more exercise in the next video which will clear out your concepts on fully defining a sketch in SOLIDWORKS. So thank you for watching my video. Uh, do subscribe to my channel to get more updates regarding SOLIDWORKS and other softwares. Thank you.